boy, oh boy. A little nip in the air this morning. Pretty soon, folks will be complaining about the cold weather. And that ain't all. Sounds like we got a customer unloading something off his chest right now. Let's listen. And it's made that noise for two mornings now, as soon as I start the engine. The fellow next door knows a lot about cars, and he says it sounds like loose pistons to him. That's a heck of a thing to have in a car as new as this. I know how you feel, Mr. Brown, but it's pretty unlikely that it's loose pistons. I'm glad you brought it in, though, so we can check it. As soon as the engine gets thoroughly cooled off, that noise should show up again. Can you leave it with us overnight? I'll leave it with you until it's fixed. And if it needs new pistons, I expect you fellas to replace them without charge. Well, how do you like that? Gosh, Jim, doesn't that make you feel like telling a customer he's all wet? Yeah, Tex, but you have to be careful not to tell them they're wrong, even when you're pretty sure they are. Right away, they get the idea you're trying to push them around. So then they get mad and go somewhere else. We need all the service customers like Mr. Brown that we can get. So why drive him away by telling him he's silly to worry about a little harmless cold engine piston slap? What do you mean harmless, Jim? Isn't any piston slap bad? Well, that depends, Ray. For example, cold piston slap is usually just a temporary condition. In the little time before the piston warms up, it can't do any damage. Sure, but uh, why not get rid of it anyway by putting in larger pistons? Then there'd be less clearance when they're cold. If you did that, Ray, they'd be too tight when they got warm. You see, aluminum pistons expand faster than the cast iron cylinder walls when they're both warming up. That's why when you fit pistons at room temperature, you have to allow just enough room for expansion to give the right fit at operating temperature. Bill's got to put new pistons in that job he's on now. He can show you about that clearance business. How about it, Bill? About ready to start fitting those pistons? No. Got to re-bore the cylinders first. Sure about that, Bill? I didn't think you'd find them that bad. Well, I've miked the cylinders, and they're a little over two thousandths out of round. Have about one and a half thousandths taper. And, uh, just look at those scuff marks. Yeah, I see. But careful honing might take care of them. Well, they look pretty deep to me. Maybe to the eye, but not to the hone. Marks even a couple of thousandths deep are duck soup for a hone. That's about right, Bill. In most cases, we sure ought to try honing before we decide to rebore. And we don't want to forget the cleaning job. You can say that again. Any honing dust left on the cylinder wall makes the piston act like it's tight, even if it's actually too loose. The only way I've found to get cylinders really clean is to go through a real laundry routine before you fit pistons. And that means scrubbing them with soap and water. You're right, Bill. That's what this new reference book you're going to get says to use, too. Yeah, and it also says, be sure you dry all parts after you clean them. Say, Ray, while Bill's working on those cylinder walls, suppose you and I talk about pistons. For instance, we all know they're cam ground. That means our pistons are not exactly round. They're slightly smaller on the pin side. The larger diameter is at right angles to the pin. Sure, but why make them like that? It helps pistons fit better, whether they're hot or cold. By letting most of the expansion or contraction occur on two sides of the piston, the clearance at the other points won't change much. Suppose you forget pistons for a minute and think about an oval-shaped rubber balloon, blown up just enough so that it would just slip inside a perfectly round tube. If you look down the tube, you'd see that the two narrow sides of the oval balloon don't touch the tube. But what if you blew it up a little more while it was still in the tube? The low sides would be forced out, so you'd have a round balloon, the same size as the tube. That's right. And an oval or cam ground piston works the same way. When it's warmed up, it expands where it's easiest, on the low side. So it becomes round and fits the round cylinder board. Just like the balloon in the tube. The snug sides don't fit much tighter until the low sides have been filled out. So, under ordinary operating temperatures, the piston expands, but doesn't get tight. Now, when the piston cools down, it's like letting that extra air out of the balloon. It resumes its natural oval shape again. In a piston, that means there'll be about six thousandths clearance at the pin sides, but the other points will still fit as snugly as before. 
In other words, by letting the piston sort of breathe in and out of the side, it fits pretty well on the thrust basis, whether it's hot or cold. 